It's got to be the longest minute in the world, huh? Yeah. You yeah. think your clock, your top clock's frozen? <laughs> it would be funny. We're here an hour later. Okay, this is a call to order for the Sparks Planning Commission meeting on Thursday, July 16th at 6 p.m. For the record, we're using the clock on the wall this to my left. We'll have a roll call. Commissioner Hewins? Absent. Commissioner Camarota? Here. Commissioner Lee? Here. Commissioner Nowicki? Here. Commissioner Peterson? Here. Commissioner Bowles? Here. Commissioner Sperber? Here. Assistant City Attorney Jim Farmer? Here. Acting City Planner Jim Here. Okay, we, uh, if there's any, this is a public meeting, so if there are any public comment, if anyone would like to come forward, there will also be another opportunity to make a public comment after the specific agenda item, in which there are three. Anyone wish to come forward? There, there being none, I'd like to call to approve the agenda. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Agenda approved. I'd like to approve the uh, the minutes of the June 18th, 2015. Move to uh, approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposition? Any opposed? No, but um, also I need to abstain. I was and, and I as well since I was absent. Okay. Uh, acting. Submit. Uh, call for the vote. The uh, minutes. Well. Yes, you should abstain too. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, okay. Any announcements and committee reports, Jim? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, would like to announce uh, Commissioner Frank Peterson. He was recently recommended by uh, Mayor Martini to serve the um, extended term or complete the term of. Commissioner Sanders, as she resigned from her post, uh, Commissioner Peterson was, uh, as I said, recommended at the Sparks City Council meeting by Mayor Martini and confirmed by the Sparks City Council. So, uh, Commissioner uh, Peterson, as you all met earlier, is is here to finish off that term. Do you have anything, Commissioner? No, I just uh, glad to be a board. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, board. Okay. Okay. Uh, so are there any informational items? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Chairman. Um, the Regional Planning Commission meeting will be heard, uh, will be held on the 22nd of July. Coming up, there are two important items in the City of Reno regarding the Ranchera project. I think projects of regional significance. Uh, Commissioner uh, Bowles will be absent from that meeting, and therefore the um, alter alternates Alternate. will be expected to attend. Our first alternate is you, Commissioner Camerata, for um, serving in Commissioner Vol's position. That's Tuesday, isn't it? Wednesday? Wednesday. That is a conflict for me. Do we have a second alternate? Uh, we do have second alternate, but I don't remember who the second alternate is. Do you? I think it's Jamie. Okay. Let me... Who's Jamie? Who, who's the third alternate? It would be... I mean, Mitch. Mitch, would you be able to attend that? What time is the meeting at? Six. Six. I'm gonna get off until six on Wednesday. Let's see if Commissioner Ferens is back in town. I'll call him tomorrow. What can you? Well, you? well uh, I believe regional planning uh, will be contacting you. Okay. Sure. Um, so, if um, if you will coordinate with them to try to contact uh, sure. Commissioner Ferens, uh, then then you guys work that out. Okay. So James is uh, number two, and Mitch is number three. And Frank would be number four. Yeah, yeah I would. I would hate to put <laughs> Poor Frank. Yeah, brand new <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Peterson. In, in that case, we, my recommendation to the board would be that we would leave one seat absent. It wouldn't be fair 
we haven't got the chance, Commissioner Peterson, to talk about the regional plan at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Threw me out there. <laughs> you, it would be up to you. Well, for the record, I'm leaving town Tuesday morning. Like I said, it's up to you guys to work out. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can get a third person because I think there should be three on something of regional significance. We have a project, I think. So let me know if, you know, maybe we can do something yeah. to get a third okay. person. Call oh, you. Give your... me a call. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, com uh, Commissioner Camarada, Chairman of Camarada, uh, I also wanted to explain that uh, at this week's city council meeting, the abandonment of the Kylie Northeast Golf Communities was finalized, and the mm -hmm. Planning Commission did recommend to the City Council to do such. So right. they followed the Planning Commission's recommendation. Uh, Karen Melby presented that item. Who are you? Okay. Okay. So let's open the public hearing. So we're now going to open our public hearing. There are three items on the agenda. The first item is PCN 15025. Ms. Melby, Karen Melby is our presenter. Welcome, Ms. Melby. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. Karen Melby, Senior Planner. Before you today is the consideration and possible action on a request for a tentative and final amendment to the Sparks Gallery of Plan Development Handbook. Right now, the um, handbook says um, you're limited to 12 nozzles, and they are requesting to change that to allow um, an increased at, um, 18 positions. The Sparks Gallery of Plan Development Handbook was approved by City Council. Oh, and also here, it, it's part, this request is coming from Costco. Um, and on the map here, I, this is where Costco is. This would be Sparks Gallery. Up here would be Los Altos. And down here is Disc Drive. Um, this map doesn't show the roads very well. Here, here's Pyramid Highway. The uh, Sparks Gallery of Plan Development Handbook was approved by City Council on June, in June of 2004. There have been two um, amendments before this request tonight. The first one was in 2006. The second one was 2008. The request before you tonight is our third amendment to this Plan Development Handbook. The existing Costco service station consists of three islands with six dispensers with a total of 12 fueling positions. This request is for a tentative and final approval for an amendment to the Sparks Gallery Handbook, Plan Development Handbook. The proposed amendment is a minor in scope and does not affect the integrity of the overall proposed or approved commercial and residential plan. Costco proposes to add one additional dispenser for each of the three islands which would include two vehicle fueling positions. This will result in an additional six vehicle fueling positions for a total of 18. The land use table for the Sparks Gallery of Plan Development Handbook, as you can see here, um, this request only is an actual, the amendment is actually one, one line in the table here, and what they're doing is asking to have a maximum of 18 fueling positions. So, um, this amendment will only affect the Costco site as, as um, you can see in this plan, it's this piece here. No. So it's only affecting that right. 2B, whatever, <laughs> it's too many initials. No. Um, so the plan amendment is only for page 7-148, and it's only this one line. Addressing the PD findings, the amendment only affects the Costco service station and does not change the allowed uses, nor does it change the nature of the plan development. This amendment facilitates the Costco gas station to expand their existing operation to better serve their customers, providing an additional fueling option and new fueling positions, which will decrease the wait time for their customers. The adding of the fueling positions at the Costco gas station does not depart from zoning regulations, nor does it change the density of the plan development, nor does it exp expand. Even though this is an expansion, they will be adding to the canopy, 
to cover the, the additional fueling stations, it does not significantly change the size or the mass of the buildings on the property. The expansion of the gas station does not affect the existing landscaping and or open space or the pedestrian and vehicular circulation of the site. Staff finds the proposed amendment complies with the plan development findings. To expedite the review of this minor amendment, this request also includes a final handbook ap approval concurrently. Based on the criteria of the Nevada Revised Statute, staff is of the opinion that the proposed amendment is in substantial compliance with the tentatively approved, approved plan in the final draft handbook. It does not vary the proposed gross residential dairy density, I'm sorry, does not vary the, the proposed ratio of residential to non-residential use. It does not reduce the open space on the site. There is no increase in the floor area though the canopy will be exposed, expanded to cover the fueling stations. And there is no increase in the total ground area covered by buildings, nor will there be a substantial change in the height of the buildings. There are no changes proposed in the final, hand, in the final hand, draft handbook. It's the staff's opinion that the final, final draft amendment for the Sparks Gallery of Plan Development Standards Handbook does not substantially vary from the five criteria as I just stated and conforms with the tentative handbook. Due to this fact, the request of this amendment to, a, to record the final handbook, staff has determined the amendment should be rev reviewed as a public hearing, which you will be ha doing tonight. Staff recommends approval of the proposed amendment, the final and tentative, final, I mean, tentative and final amendments to the handbook. This concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions, questions uh, from the commissioner? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple. Okay. Karen, um, on, uh, do, are they going to add diesel on, how many diesel are they going to add to it, pumps? My understanding is they're going to add a, one fueling state, a dispenser to each of the three islands. So we'll be adding three dispensers that have diesel, diesel. which would give you two on each dispenser. And which direction are they going to add, to the west or to the east? It'd be to the north. North, north or south, yeah. Yeah, the to gas the fueling north. stations are north-south oriented, so it's going to be on the north side. Okay. There's more space in the north. You yeah. You've got to turn left. Well, the south. South, south. You couldn't do it. Yeah, it would exactly. affect the exiting of the site. Did we have a detail on that? I didn't see a detail. Did I miss um, in my staff report? I never saw I, it. They give, did give me a site plan. I didn't include it because we're looking at the plan development handbook and not the, de, the oh, okay. development. Got it. That's why I did not include it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. What do you and have? I also have the, the entire handbook if anybody's interested, but right. we are, this amendment only affects that one page. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. The applicant. Would the applicant like to come forward and discuss their project? It'll come on when you start talking. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Angelo Bologna with Bark House and Consulting Engineers. Um, and I also have David Rogers here in case uh, with Costco Wholesale if you have any questions regarding the expansion or the uh, modification to the handbook. I think you could add another 20 and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> 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 And um, we would like to be able to add diesel to all fueling positions if possible. To add what? Diesel to all fueling positions if possible. Okay. To answer to your question. Or, each or, of them and then each. what you're going to do is go farther north, make another group. So you can have three cars start up instead of two. Is that Three per island, correct. Per island, that's what I mean. So yeah. We're gonna Coming into that, the queue lane. And then also I didn't see. So we're going to also the canopy is going to be brought farther to the north also. Correct. So that's, that's essentially what you do, just adding a third. Third island. Yeah. And then possible. Well, they also have to under add the underground tank for the diesel storage. Right. Oh, exactly. Right. Different. Which size tank, you know? It's a 20,000 gallon uh, diesel tank and a 1,500 fuel, uh, diesel fuel additive tank. Okay. All right. This being public a hearing. public hearing, is there anyone from the audience who would like to make a public comment? Okay. Bring it back hearing none, table. we'll bring it back to the table. Any comments from the commissioners? Well, I'd just like to say it makes common sense to put it more in there. I, like many of you, go there 
and it doesn't feel like it gets in the way of anything adding some more positions in there. So that's all I'd like to say. I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. Let's close the no. problem. No, we I think we closed. We closed. We closed. closed, we closed, closed, we closed, closed. So uh, I move to forward a recommendation for tentative and final approval of a request for an amendment to the Sparks Galleria Plan Development Handbook associated with PCN 15025, adopting findings PD1 through PD21 and the facts supporting those findings as set forth in the staff report. Because the request included includes final approval, the Planning Commission does not recommend that the City Council require a bond at this time as stated in NRS 278A.490. Second. Um, any more comment? Uh, let's call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Right. Thank you. Next item. Uh, next PCN. item on the agenda is item PCN15027, Ian or Ian Crittenden? Ian, welcome. Our newest planner, uh, Mr. Crittenden. Uh, planning Commissioners, I'm Ian Crittenden, Senior Planner. Mm -hmm. um, this is a uh, Uh, a special use permit to allow a recreational use in an industrial zone. Um, it is uh, an airsoft uh, arena is, is the proposed use. Uh, it's a, um, the, the current use at the location, I'll bring up uh, some pictures of the Um, the, 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 it was a, a warehouse that was used as a furniture uh, store and they are proposing to, um, this is the existing uh, improvements inside of the, the warehouse. Um, there is a, uh, most of it is an open warehouse. There's a storage unit towards the south end. Is it the south end? I'm trying to get my bearings and remember which end it is. Um, that is the owner has, uses that as storage and that it, way it will, main, it will continue. Um, their tenant improvements uh, are to add a lobby, um, a little bit of retail sales for um, things related to, the, to Airsoft, and then the most of that is going to be an open arena for them to play Airsoft. If you don't know, Airsoft is kind of a, a, like paintball, uh, but with no paint, you know, little plastic pellets that they shoot at each other. Um, in kind of military uh, style style games, so um, staff reviewed this. Uh, the, the the only real uh, potential issue is parking. Um, the uh, the uh, entertainment or uh, what's the the recreation requirement is very high. Um, and uh, I know that the, there have been a, a number of these kind of recreational uses go into the industrial buildings, softball, volleyball, those kind of things, and they just don't have the same demand as you would if it were an arcade or some other recreational use, which is kind of what the, um, the parking requirements are built for. Uh, the applicant did do a, not, not a professional level parking study, but did do a very thorough evaluation of what their parking needs were going to be. Um, uh, looking at the, the number of um, sessions they were going to have a day, um, the number of participants that have per session, and the spacing or the time they'd give between those sessions. Um, uh, after reviewing their parking analysis or their analysis of their demand for parking, uh, staff feels like this is, uh, th there's adequate parking over there. The, the other piece that plays into that is that uh, most of the people that are participating are drop-offs. There are kids that are younger than the driving age, so their parents are dropping them off and picking them up, so there, there really shouldn't be a lot of overlap between sessions and, and the demand for, for parking throughout the day should be fairly low. Um, the one point at which there may be a higher demand for parking is they are, uh, uh, they, they do work with uh, law enforcement for training exercises, and law enforcement will probably take a lot more parking than anybody else, but they will probably be an all-day event when they, when they do that. And so, um, they'll, they'll address those those needs as they come up. 
Thank you. Are there uh, any questions for, for Mr. Clinton? Is this the only facility in Washoe County like this? That I don't know. The would you like to come up, sir? Sure. Thank you. You're the applicant, yeah. right? Right. So why don't, why don't we bring you yeah. up? Yeah. I hear you. Welcome. I appreciate you, Bob. I'll answer many questions I can. <laughs> so, Paul, Chairman, members of the commission, I'm Ray Paul, for the record. Thank you. <laughs> Been a while, Ray. How are you? So, yeah, so, so you, back to your question. Yeah, right. so they're, the nearest one is Oakland? Yes, the Bay Area is the closest uh, okay. place that you could do the same thing. So there ought to be a lot of use for it here. I think there will be a okay. lot of use for this. Were there any other questions? Yeah, I wanted to, okay, so what I read in this thing, and this is correct, Ray, so it looks like then you're take our break between groups that go in there to allow to keep the parking down, is that what? Correct. To allow it to, to allow them to come out and the next group to come in. Right. So if we got parents coming in and come in and out, and you won't have that much, and that's why you feel we should lower the parking Correct. requirements. Correct. Okay, right. So it so it's that, and they do go during the day on this thing in weekends. Is when is. I, I wish Chris was here. I think basically it's the evenings and, and the weekends and things of that nature. And it, I'm glad he was brought up because the uh, law enforcement will use this. There's training facilities right. also. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to uh, involve themselves in target practice and working uh, interactive with respect to uh, live personnel and things of that nature. So, And I believe that they will take over for the whole day when they do their training. And they will be the biggest part of uh, parking. They will be used most yeah. parking. And so, really, um, um, what are the ages of the people normally? That you know, the, the age Disney group. Movie? When I talked to Chris about this, it, it can be everywhere from, uh, you know, yeah. eight, nine years old up to sixty-five, seventy years old. Right. So, it's going to be a, a big cross section. But I think most of the kids, as mentioned, uh, will be dropped off, and they have birthday uh, party rooms uh, set up so they can have these events and it's with young kids and things of that nature. It's kind of a, an attractive. Uh, uh, opportunity for young people to get involved in, in stuff. And like I said, there's nothing in the area. This will be the first one will yeah, be uh, right. unique to that. Point. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Yes, this is the audience. Yeah. Our news I, uh, I have one question. Uh, actually, in reviewing yeah. this, I noticed I too kind of was concerned about the parking. And uh, everything seemed to be explained. As, in fact, I thought you were going to do it in shifts, weren't you going to have it so? But the only thing that I have about it by experience, I would not rely too much on the drop off. I really wouldn't because they have a tendency to all of a sudden come all at one time in cars for a stay. That's the only objection I have. I don't, I just don't know if we can depend on the drop off so much that they can relieve the parking situation. That's my opinion. Because there will be days that they will come through. Then also on your, on the days that you have the uh, the uh, police academies using that, they will be closed to the public events. That is right? correct. Oh, okay. That is correct. Uh, Ray, I have a question. Um, sure. The, the off of Glendale, uh, this is a private drive. Yes. Uh, private drive is is owned by these the owners of this property as well as the properties on the other side of the private drive is, I believe so that is correct I know they do this one I'm not sure on the uh, this is a Kazaza property I know I can't remember. it's a Kazaza kids basically the daughter so um, obviously um, given what was in there before versus what's in there now there's going to be a lot more use on that on that private drive is I have not and I should have and I have not gone out there and driven that, which I usually do before a meeting, but is there any issues that we need to think, contemplate about um, uh, the, the, the uh, condition of that private drive or the condition going forward? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the vehicle or traffic is going to have is basically just resident, you know, cars basically. Uh, uh, they're not going to be heavy traffic where before there's warehouse uses. So there were heavier traffic and things of that nature with heavier loads and things of that nature. So I don't see a problem with respect to that. I have a question for staff. Did, did we hear from neighbors? No, 
I, I received no input from the community. Okay. Thank you, Ian. I question for Ray. Sure. Uh, I know you're an old landscape buff, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, one of the conditions that calls for in, uh, updating and intensifying the current landscape, you have any idea what you might be doing? And do you need to add irrigation or? No, I don't think it'd be adding any irrigation, but they'll be, you know, they're trying to beautify and make the building right. look a little nicer than it was because it's going to be more public building rather than a warehouse. So they're trying to enhance the. Uh, the appearance of the outside, and so they'll be looking at that uh, a little closer. But I don't think they're looking to uh, they'll probably take drop, on drop additional water. Or, plants. Yeah. Okay. They're going to use the, the normal, you know, to keep down the tolerance for right. water. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Right. It looks like existing is on the south side. And existing. Correct. And but it's more a warehouse type. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Commissioner Camerata, uh, yep. speaking with the. Uh, City Attorney, can we take a five-minute recess? Sure. Something for staff to go over. So, sure. seeing that. That's sure. uh, six. Sure. Let's close the public meeting at 6.25 uh, and bring everyone back into chambers at 6.30. Five-minute recess, please. Thank you.
Zero two seven. Did um, either council or um, Jim want to speak? Sorry, sir. Is there? Um, okay. So that we're going to go back to staff, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, the issue that came up and, and Jim caught it um, was. Uh, our special use permit uh, doesn't really have a mechanism for allowing us to reduce the parking to the degree that we're talking about, um, and so. Uh, we're going to have to work out with the applicant a, uh, a, a way to, to, to address that parking, whether that's through um, a parking agreement or, or hours of yeah. operations. We can work that out. We, uh, we drafted a, an additional condition to the uh, conditions of approval. It basically states that uh, I can read it to you. It sure. says, um, the applicant shall supply parking in compliance with uh, Sparks Municipal Code, parking requirements to the approval of the administrator, prior to issuance of a building permit. So that yeah, that allows them to receive approval at this level from the Planning Commission um, and then to work out the, the, the nitty gritty of these parking requirements, whether they can get a parking agreement with adjacent land, landowners or something um, prior to, to us issuing a building permit because they do have tenant improvements. So that allows them to get approval tonight and then have administrative approval on the rest of it um, so that'll be later condition on. Eight? Yeah, it'll be condition eight. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Planner Crittenden. Any? Uh, yeah. The, anything else? Well, the applicant. Like to add? Yeah, the applicant's okay with that. We've spoke with them also, and uh, we understand. And, mm -hmm. and as long as we're given the opportunity to work on that after this uh, hearing, I think we can get that put together. Okay. okay. Thank you. You don't have any worry about getting it straightened out in the parking. Correct. After after this board approves. That is correct. Prior to getting a building permit. Prior to a building permit. So you still have the opportunity. Okay. Sure. Not move ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this being a public hearing, are there any? Uh, open the public hearing. We want to open a public hearing for public comment. Any, Would anyone like to come forward? Okay. We'll Let's close that. We'll close that. Uh, bring it back to the commissioners mm -hmm. for for comments. Um. 
Yes. Yeah. I'm prepared to make a motion. Uh, I move to approve the special use permit associated with PCN 15027, adopting findings S1 through S6 and the fa facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report, subject to the conditions of approval 1 through 8 as listed in the staff report. Um, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Good Thank luck you with your much. project. Thank you. Thank you. The motion is approved. Thank you. Any third item? PCN. We have a third item on our agenda. PCN. Item PCN 12022. All right, uh, Commissioners, I'm Ian Crittenden, Senior Planner. Um, this item is one that you've seen a couple of times, I believe. Yes. Um, it is uh, for the uh, Legends Bay Casino, uh, Hotel Casino Resort. Um, the, uh, in, I believe it was February, or, yeah, February, it, it was, there was a one-year extension given to the project. Um, they came in with a request for an amendment to the special use permit, um, and all they're amending is the, uh, the site layout. Um, it is currently one parcel. Uh, and they want to split it into three for for funding reasons. Uh, it allows them to to be more flexible in their in their funding and, and so forth. And so you can see on here that uh, this was all one large parcel, and they want to split it into three parcels: uh, one for each of the hotels and one for the casino. Um, this doesn't affect any of the previous conditions, uh, barring one. Uh, if, if you looked through it, there, there's a lot of information. I, I, I had to read through a very large file in trying to prepare for this one. And um, the, the one thing that we caught, and we caught it today, was um, that I had pulled, and I had purposely pulled all the original conditions from the, uh, the, the approval of special use permit so that it was very apparent to everything that all the conditions stayed the same, the development's not changing in any, any substantive <coughs> manner, this is just a, uh, an on paper changing of some parcels so that they can, they can move forward. Um, but the one that I didn't catch was the expiration date of their special use permit. And that that expiration, uh, we we drafted a new a new um, uh, a, a new uh, condition number two. Um, if I know how to use this thing, right? There you go. Um, and it basically just states that the expiration date of the special use permit will be on. Uh, February 5th, 2016, which is one year from the one-year extension that was previously approved. So uh, that, that's the, the, an adjustment that we'll need to make to that motion. Okay. okay any, are there questions? any questions from the guys? And, and maybe I'll ask if there's an applicant some questions, but what, the first thing is what you're saying, this will, the amendment will give a year from today's date? No, from, or the, from, from the original. It doesn't and affect. And that was the question I was concerned. We're not giving additional time. This doesn't here. affect the Good. approval time frames. Is That's what I was what concern with is yeah. that we didn't just bring this longer and longer, that we're just using the same thing and just looking at property uh, yeah. lines and the saying all conditions are the same as what you're saying. So this would be that extension. This is during the extension of one year. Do, do we need a break? You know, I think we might need a break. Okay. Okay. Using clock on the yeah. wall, let's, let's take a break. <laughs> Five minute break. <laughs>
Well, I didn't want to make my... So I wanted to Thank make you. sure it was, you, yeah. you know. Um, it, it's actually, uh, it's, a, it's a major issue to them, but it's a minor uh, change to what we were proposing. Um, I had run the, uh, the, the expiration date from the date of approval of the extension when it really should have been the date of the approval of the original special use permit. The original special use permit was approved on March 21st of 2013, and so that should be the date in 2015 that the extension, extension started from, and so it's one year from there. So that, that's the, the minor the issue. Um, Okay. Okay. So you're in. It's so a one-year extension. It is a one-year extension. Um, that we granted last time is that yeah. that final one year. Yes. So it's from that date, and so you're going to write in the condition, the actual date yeah. of the extension being which date again? Or at twenty first, twenty twenty. Would include that. Would in, exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. To remove the existing condition number two and replace it with this one. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. These guys didn't wait until the absolute last second pass for an extension. They did it in kind of a timing manner. Within the. And responsibly. And so. Are there. <laughs> got it. Are there any other questions for staff? Shall we bring the applicant forward, please? Thank <laughs> you. Please. Rob Pizel representing uh, Rubicon Design Group, getting my billable hour in. Um, <laughs> Rob, Rob. <laughs> um, we do have a, a representative from Olympia Gaming here um, who can answer any questions with regards to uh, the project itself. Uh, the staff report is absolutely correct. They're asking for this lot split for financial reasons. Um, two of the parcels will be occupied by the hotels, and the third will be occupied by the casino and a uh, large majority of the parking. Um, and with that, um, I'll try to answer any questions. So presumably for fina different financing and background, I imagine. Rob, um, oh. it, I can understand the financial part of it, but in here it says it also provides benefits in terms of operating and maintenance agreements between the hotel flags and franchises. Will you explain that? Yeah, um, actually, I'd refer that um, to um, the Olympia representative. He's more knowledgeable about the, the agreements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Rob. DC Graham, Olympia Gaming. Uh, good evening, right, Commissioner. Okay. Uh, go ahead with your, your question again. I, well, I, I understand the financial reasons yes. by splitting into three parcels, but it also says it provides benefits in terms of operating and maintenance agreements between the hotel flags slash franchises. Um, actually, I'm not... There's not a considerable change there between them. We, just, um, we have unique uh, hotel brands or flags. We have a Marriott flag and a Hilton right. flag. Mm -hmm. So although we maintain ownership in all components as the, the master developer of this piece. Um, so maybe there there would be three maintenance agreements? or Well, there's a master. The shopping center itself has an OEA, has a OEA that sits on top of it regardless. Right. So uh, that would that covers everything. With, with Red Development and the other owners in the, right. in the center, um, we, I mean, is a, is a it, it's possible this could help, but the ownership as it relates to the hotels and the casino are probably going to be slightly different. They'll be different entities, so uh, that is potentially could help, but it's unclear totally if it will. Okay, great. Yeah, well, I, I can't. That. It just kind of caught my eye, and I was. Yeah. I didn't really understand the way it was worded, but I don't know how it Yeah, but the primary purpose is the initial the aspects is the, the fact that the hotels will be uh, handled under a separate financing with a different lender than the casino component. So that's why we have security of each parcel uh, as uh, that for the, for, the, uh, financing, for the financing or the lenders. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Graham. Yes. You're welcome. I have a question for Graham as well. Uh, I'm not sure that it's even in our purview or, or that we would care, but... If we do this, does it make it easier, if you wish to, in the future, to sell one of those parcels and maintain ownership of the other two? Um, no, not really. It doesn't. We maintain ownership in each piece. Uh, so uh, I, I don't foresee it having much difference in that regard. 
I mean, we it's our intent at this time to maintain ownership and everything. So uh, I'm not looking ahead to selling any components, so I, I really can't speak to that at this point. And the special use permit would run with the land. That's actually something I should have included in, in when I was discussing this. Mm -hmm. the, the whole reason that this split actually had to come to um, Planning Commission is because special use permits run with the land that they're granted on. Right. And because it was granted on a single piece, once you split those, it, it, it goes away if they don't amend it to say, look, we want it to apply to all three of these, parts, these pieces. So, so that's the reason it's here. Now, what that'll do as well is, is even if they were to sell one of these pieces soon or in the, far in the future, the, the special use permit and the conditions right. to it will, will stay intact. They, they're not going because of change of ownership. And so there may be a concern, yes. but the concern of it, uh, the, the special use permit and all the conditions will be still in, in place. And will these three parcels create additional roadways? N roadways? That there were develop there were roads that were to be developed while, when this development when the the buildings come in and stuff and that'll still be in place okay so it's not creating anything no it, it doesn't change anything to the design that was previously approved it just changes the the orientation of the actual parts of the land so these conditions now go with these three parcels will be attached to all three rather attached to one so as far from a legal standpoint, that's fine with? Yeah, well, I'm sorry to do this to you this evening, but yeah. this is kind of a unique situation in terms of the I know. Would, would you give kind of a 30,000 foot overview of what's going on? Uh, do you want me to address the issue of uh, the, how the, uh, the gaming license component? Yeah, just, yeah. Why, how, how your state gaming license is unique and mm -hmm. why you still need a special use permit here in Spark. Okay. Um, what, what he, what's being Doug's referencing is um, we have a, a, a gaming license, an active gaming license that sits here at this point in time. And that gaming license is a non-restricted gaming license that uh, allows us to open a casino with no rooms. Uh, we, on the other hand, we have a special use permit, which is carrying on the land, which we are held to building 201 rooms, which is what is in this plan and design, and it's always been in this plan and design. So uh, we understand there's two parts, and we are abiding by the uh, special use permit associated with the project. So these, therefore, the two hotels of 100 and, and uh, slightly over 100 rooms each. So for the special use permit, you will have to have the rooms. Correct. So we, we, that's that what change. I wanted to make sure. So we're still keeping that because I know how we move the license and this yeah. and that. Okay, great. So we're keeping all the conditions in the hold. Yes, and yes. I think the, with what's going on in the region, um, the right. need for the hotel component is actually becoming more and more critical to this project than it ever was before. Okay. So. We're right. looking forward so to the, building the room. <laughs> right. So just so terrific. Just a summary of what's going on is, is right. that you know traditionally under state law you would yeah. be required to have a hotel component exactly. for a non-restricted gaming enterprise. But Olympia has a, a grandfathered license that I doesn't remember. have such a requirement. Right. So the requirement in, in the context of this project comes solely from the plan development handbook and the special use permit that you're considering tonight. Exactly. Which has already been approved and we're continuing with the three parcels. Right. And yeah. so even Perfect. technically under state law, Olympia doesn't need the rooms, they do need the rooms for the project here. Exactly. That's what I want to make sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Are we bringing the parrot up from Fandango over here? The parrot hasn't been running in a while. Uh, okay. We've remodeled some things and the track doesn't quite work uh, with us anymore, so maybe. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Any other comments from the commissioners? Open public uh, hearing. Uh, this being a public hearing, if anyone from the audience would like to come forward and speak? We'll close, close, the public. Public, close the public comment and bring, uh, bring it back to the commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. I move to approve the amendment to special use permit SP120009 associated with PCN12022 adopt findings S1 through S6 and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report subject to the conditions of approval one with uh, condition number two amended as proposed through 
condition 31 as listed in this staff report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Opposed. The motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Good a luck. great night. All right. Uh, this being a public hearing. Public comment. A public comment uh, is a general comment that's uh, limited to any items that do not appear on the agenda and is limited to no more than three minutes for each commentator pursuant to NRS 241020. No action may be taken upon a matter raised under this item until the matter has been specifically included as an agenda item. Would anyone like to come forward and make a public comment? We're going to close that public comment. Uh, comments from the commissioners? Um, I'd like to make a comment. I, th I think this last item we looked at had some complications. And I think there are times to have planning sessions. And I would like staff to look at um, whether we have planning. It would have been study, nice. session. study sessions, I think. In this case, there was some items that I had some concerns, and we could have maybe resolved these before the meeting. Could you pass it on, please? So, I'd like to welcome our new commissioner. Any other comments? Thank you. Uh, that being said, um, I'll move to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.